Welcome and a very good afternoon to our dearest viewers. This is Afrin once again welcoming you to a Facebook live session which is conducted by Sims Hospital Vadapalli and is held on every Wednesdays between 4 to 5 p.m. So today, today we are going to have a very exciting conversation about the most sensational topic that has in beautifying people and thank you so much for joining us sir. So I told you the, uh, sir, I mean the topic is about cosmetic surgery. First I would like to ask what is cosmetic surgery sir? Uh, that's a very good question actually. See, uh, cosmetic surgery is a subspecialty in uh, plastic surgery. So if you take plastic surgery, uh, it can uh, be divided into uh, cosmetic surgery, burns and reconstructive surgery, trauma surgery, hand and micro surgery and so on and so forth. It goes on, keeps on going. Uh, by definition, plastic surgery per se means problem solving specialists. So uh, this in this specialty, cosmetic surgery is a branch. So in cosmetic surgery, what are we focusing? It's just, an, is it enhancing beauty or is it going to be uh, the people who are affected or who, have, who are having an uh, imperceptive, who are having an ugly scar in the face, they want to revise it. So it all started that way. So. By definition, if you ask me, cosmetic surgeon, which part of the body they operate? If you ask a gastroenterologist, he'll be operating on the intestines. If you ask a urologist, he'll be operating on the kidneys. So, cosmetic surgeon, where does he operate? He operates from head to foot. Anywhere in the body, if a person has a problem, we try to solve it. So basically what he's telling us, plastic surgeons are all around us, actually. <laughs> so, sir, so you said That's that from true. head to toe. So what are the surgeries that is available from the head to toe, sir? Yeah. We'll uh, confine myself, my talk to cosmetic surgery. Yes. If you take uh, cosmetic surgeries of the scalp, we all know it's a male pattern baldness. Mm. So that is common for the males as well as female pattern baldness for females. So male pattern baldness, if it affects it, people at a younger age, 25 years long, like a baldness, or they, they feel shy to go out. They, there are various other ways to camouflage it, but mm -hmm. they use details. But uh, hair transplant surgery is a very safe procedure if it is done in an institute. We have heard a lot of mishaps happening outside, but if it is done in an institute where sterility is maintained and uh, where we have all the uh, infrastructure to support a person if ever there is a problem or a complication, then I think it's a very safe procedure. Okay. So people who are actually experiencing this kind of baldness, no need to worry. We have a solution that is a hair transplant. Okay, so, so I want to know, how do you do this hair transplant surgery, sir? Usually, uh, we need, uh, if a person is asking for a hair transplant, as soon as they walk into our OP, at least in our department, what we do is a dermoscopic examination with the help of a dermatologist. We assess the scalp nature. What, why is the, what is the pathology for hair loss, we will assess. Then try to focus on that. Uh, hair transplant is a last resort. So before going into the surgery per se, we need to stabilize the scalp. If there is any scalp pathology, we try to cure that. And then only we take them up for surgery. Okay, so first you cure the pathologist. Is there any other specific indications for hair transplant, sir? Uh, usually, uh, like uh, you can uh, see, uh, as I said, a male pattern baldness mm -hmm. or a scar which is causing a hair loss. The, mm -hmm. the, the person would have undergone some surgery in the scalp mm -hmm. that has uh, resulted in a scar and that bad scar leads to scar alopecia. Conditions like that where uh, even a neurosurgical intervention where they operate a bicoronal incision. Bicoronal incision, what I mean is a, a scar will be running from this year to this year. Mm. And uh, there will be an area of baldness over the entire area. So people who want to camouflage it, they try to ask a permanent solution, we offer a transplant okay. for such ca cases. cases. Okay, fine sir. So this hair transplant, uh, what is the duration for this procedure sir? Um, it depends on the baldness, see the extent of the baldness, if it is uh, the entire frontal area is gone uh, up to the vertex area, then it is going to be, uh, the patient will require around 1500 to 2000 grafts per sitting. 
we usually, uh, the maximum we have done is around 2,500 grams per sitting and it lasted about eight hours. The duration is around eight hours. So the amount of local anesthesia we are giving, we have to top up the local anesthesia. So if it is done in an institution like us, we have good infrastructure. You know, it is very beneficial and very safe for the patient. So the duration all depends on the extent of baldness. Okay. So since this is also one of these major surgeries because it involves all the local anesthesia and all those things, uh, what are the expected adverse effects after the surgery? Ah, see, uh, all these patients are otherwise uh, normal individuals. Mm. If not, they are undergoing this procedure, they are normal individuals. Like any other procedure, cosmetic surgery has its own side effects or uh, its own implications. As I said, the toxicity of uh, local anesthesia is one the first and foremost thing. Other things like uh, uh, infection or uh, minor bleeding, all those things are part and parcel of any surgery. So that is all you can expect here. Now the results having uh, asked this question, I will tell you, the results of heart transplant mm. will be obvious after four months only. It is not like a magic, magic job that you come today and uh, you do the heart transplant tomorrow and the next day I will have a normal hair. That's mm -hmm. not the, that should not be the expectation. We really counsel the patients what to expect out of cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. For any, like other any other procedure, we tell them. So it will take uh, at least three to four months for it to settle and to get a normal hair uh, pattern. So patience is must to have a perfect looking hair actually. Okay, sir. So now the hair part is over. Next, we'll come to the face, sir. So it is always there, like you know, as a woman and most of the men, even now, we feel like we need to look forever young, you know. So what are these uh, procedures or surgeries that is available to make us look young forever? Okay, see, um, to look young is everybody's wish and will, exactly. even if you ask a 80 year old uh, person, they will say they, they need to remove the wrinkles and other things. So I will talk about the surgical aspects first, then we will uh, go into the non-surgical aspects. If you look into the surgical aspects, we have a, a facelift, a grow lift or a blepharoplasty, depending on where the drooping is. See, with the advancing age, because of the effects of gravity, our face will sag down. So you need to lift it. Where it is sagging, you have to lift it. Face lift from the sides or the bro lift or a blepharoplasty will lift the, all the tissues up. So that a 60 year, 60 year old people who are still continue to working here, when there are times when 55, the time of retirement was there, whereas now people start working up to 70 or 75. Mm -hmm. So they need to mingle with the youngsters and they come for these procedures. So lifting up is an important procedure. So we do that uh, uh, lift part of it. Apart though, those are the extreme procedures. If you ask for the non-surgical procedures for face, you have all the variety of chemical peels are there. So we can use the chemical fields. Uh, you can use Botox for uh, right it's we call, or facial wrinkles. You can correct all those things with the Botox. Uh, depending on the indication, we assess. We don't uh, say that A plus B is equal to C. It is not like so. It all varies from patient to patient, from individual to individual, and what is the mindset of them? What is the expectation of uh, of them? We need to understand that. correct results So, if you have a face sagging, sir, one of the reasons is uh, gravitational. Can I know any other reasons that will cause face sagging? Like, is it uh, possible that younger generation also Younger generation, there are a lot of uh, connective tissue diseases mm. are there where even uh, I recently came across a patient who is a 28 year old man. He looked like a 62 year old man. Okay. So I uh, went into the article, we did a skin biopsy for him. It mm. is a part and parcel of the uh, connective tissue disease which is going on. We have started him on uh, rheumatology workup and we have treated him and he is showing uh, signs of improvement. He is waiting for 
our uh, lift series of lifts he is waiting for. That's very good to hear, sir. So now coming again to the face, the thing is because it's given more important because that is what people see when they first look at you, right? So now uh, many actresses, even normal human beings, they prefer to have features that are like you know amicable like to others also. For example, the nose and the lips and all those things. Can you just tell me a few surgeries that will correct the nose and all those? Yeah, things? that's a very good question actually. You see, the nasal deformity, um, it can be uh, from birth or even a post-traumatic uh, deformity. Hmm. So whatever it be the cause, uh, they wanted to correct their uh, nose. So uh, this, uh, excuse me, this rhinoplasty, cosmetic rhinoplasty, is a boom uh, among the plastic surgeons. So yeah. not all uh, does that and uh, not all get the desired results. In rhinoplasty, the expectation of the patient needs to be understood fully. Mm. And we need to counsel them what is possible, what to expect of rhinoplasty. You would have heard about uh, famous uh, hero in a doll undergoing this exactly. uh, uh, rhinoplasty. And that too, they went, went on, went on, went on for two or three sittings or four sittings again and again, even in the best of the best centers, they were doing that. So the problem is not only with the nose, the problem is with their expectation, what to expect out of mm -hmm. surgery, they won't understand initially. They will show some uh, actor or actress's image and ask them, ask us to replicate, which is highly impossible. And we usually don't entertain such patients. Uh, if there is a cosmetic and as well as functional uh, problem in the nose, we are the first persons uh, to operate on such patients and we make them understand what to expect out of rhinoplasty. So that is about the nose part of it. You asked about the face, the second part of the question. There are, there are plenty of scars, there are plenty of uh, lip eversion, inversion, post-traumatic sequelae or birth defects in the form of cleft. There are a lot of things, post-cancer, reconstructed lips, how to correct it. So it, it all depends on the need of the patient. If there is really an inversion of the lip which needs to be everted normally, post-cancer reconstruction patients will have drooling of saliva. So it's a functional problem. So okay. you need to correct, address those things first. Okay. Whereas some patient will ask for, especially cosmetic surgery patients will ask for uh, the volume of the red vermilion to be more or less. Mm -hmm. So such patients we will address with fillers. We have uh, fillers and uh, it's, it's all non-surgical but minimal invasive uh, mm. procedures. So you fill the white vermilion alone, you try to evert the lip up, give, them, uh, give up the volume, add to the volume of the lip, make it mm. look little uh, br thicker mm. or uh, bulkiness, add bulkiness to the lip. Okay. So such okay. procedures, are the, the, those sort of procedures can be done as a daycare procedure okay. itself. Okay. So now there's also now another hyped up topic that is the Botox. So that is more preferred by so many women actually. Yeah. Can you just tell me a few lines of the Botox? Sir? See, Botox is mainly indicated for the right tips which mm. we are uh, talking about. So it is uh, like, like paralyze the hyperactive muscles. Mm. I don't want to go into those details but because if I start talking about Botox it takes al almost yes. half an hour. So uh, it is few lines I will say. It is mm. about to correct the right tits. It, it, it won't paralyze the muscles. It's a temporarily paralysis of the muscle, you mm. can say. Take it that way. You should not get carried away and get scared with those uh, terminologies. But uh, it actually gives nice, uh, once the right tits is gone, it gives a nice uh, value to the face. Mm. Uh, surukam Maranjan. Like in that is the wrinkles will be hidden. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that, fine. Sir. That, that is the main thing in that. And uh, animation of our wrinkling is much, much more important. Mm -hmm. Rather than rest wrinkles, animate pantra, sirikra, puru, tukra, they will have uh, exactly, those yeah. wrinkles. And adu pohono, abdina, romba, That is what we try to correct. Correct those things. Yes, so, so. 
So actually, uh, even I have heard few stuff saying that uh, the Chinese people they don't laugh or smile much, saying because you they get uh, wrinkles very quickly. Quickly. So I uh, thought so this is one of the steps actually to reduce the wrinkles. Right. And next, uh, uh, next we we'll go to the scarring and the uh, the marks we get when we get injured or uh, during surgeries or anything. And also now pimples and all those things. What is the treatment for curing these scars? Sir? Uh, see, in a uh, face, uh, if you see, a lot of people will undergo a face, especially the uh, teenagers and uh, uh, people in the early 20s will undergo uh, acne formation. Yes. So this acne, if it is identified and treated properly, and if the skin is not that, that oily, it settles on its own, uh, meaning it won't leave a scar. Whereas, uh, there are uh, hyper. There are people with thick skin, oily skin, where these people develop multiple acne. They form pits. Once the active acne is gone, maybe the uh, active acne phase is gone after a period of say two to three years. It leaves uh, ugly scars over the face in the form of pits, especially in men. And uh, these sort of people, they come for uh, treatment offer us some sort of solution. We don't want, uh, like to look at our face at all. That is the impression they give. So we have multiple procedures for that. Though all our uh, daycare procedures like subsession or micro needle abrasion, all these can be done uh, with our uh, help of dermatologists with, with the topical uh, anesthesia. Mm. You don't need a general anesthesia to treat that. And uh, we, in our department, we have the latest modality in the form of carbon dioxide lasers. So maybe two or three sittings of CO2 lasers also are helpful for uh, acne pits. So once they, uh, once they are subjected to such treatment, the uh, scar settles down beautifully and the pits vanish away. So thereby you can resurface the skin. The other part of uh, treatment for all these things, we have discussed about peels and uh, mm -hmm. the things which we discussed. Now your uh, other part of the question is about the surgical scars or post-traumatic scars over the face, how yes. to go about it. So those are the scars if not treated by, that is why we suggest that has to be sutured meticulously by a plastic surgeon. We always, so now I'm not blaming other surgeons that they are not doing a proper job. See, this face uh, and the soft tissue work is basically our specialty and we respect the soft tissue. We know how to, uh, if, it, if there is a trauma and if there is a soft tissue loss, we know how to approximate those tissues and how to carefully, uh, meticulously close the wound. A wound closed in such a manner leaves a minimal scar. Whereas majority of the wounds are treated outside and the access to the healthcare facility is restricted, especially in the periphery, where they undergo suturing uh, with the non-medical people. And once the person develops a scar, they come back to us asking for some sort of treatment. So at that point, we suggest the scar has to mature. Any treatment has to undergo once the scar matures only, which will usually takes after three months. So. Uh, after the initial injury or initial treatment. After that, we'll assess the scar, we'll assess the nature of the skin. Uh, so once a decision is taken, then we will revise the scar. Mm -hmm. We do multiple set plasties to orient the scars to, uh, rest uh, to RSTL of the face. RSTL is relaxed skin tension line. Mm -hmm. So uh, a scar formed parallel to that, RSTL will always leave an imperceptible scar, mm. whereas a scar which is perpendicular to the RSTL leaves an ugly scar. So you try to convert a vertical wound, you divide the wound into halves and make it lie parallel by doing that plasties. So in such a way that the scars are camouflaged. That is about the surgical part of it. Now, after the patient has sustained an injury, they have come to a plastic surgeon, plastic surgeon has did a fantastic suturing, a meticulous suturing, even then the scar forms. Now what are we going to do? We have answers for that also. We do have uh, uh, the latest machines in CO2 lasers, which uh, with the help of it, we can modulate those scars and make it imperceptible. Okay. So how does it happen, sir, the modulation of these scars and all? 
it all the the direction of the collagen and the fibrocartilage material uh, mm. fibrocollagenous material is altered mm. so thereby making a thick scar or a tough scar you resurface the scar to the surface of the existing uninjured skin okay this That's way it helps uh, okay fine so in uh, in uh, normal language we can say that patti pakra mari so yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly exactly okay that's a good thing sir so is there any other ways to treat our scars not just not the surgical but any other ways are there sir yeah see any scar uh, can be divided if the patient skin does not have a tendency to form a uh, scar it is well and good but if the person has a tendency to form a hypertrophic scar or a keloid scar then the issue comes in so we address those uh, issues with the uh, mm. scar modulating agents we use mm. silicon we give intralesional steroids mm. and uh, if it is going to be a keloid especially over the ear lobule we excise the keloid first then subject the patient to radiotherapy small dose of radiotherapy and uh, subsequently follow it up with the intralesional steroid we have lot of uh, treatment options uh, depending on the uh, patient situation we have to take a call okay fine so that was really interesting and next to the the most important topic that is the breast so there are few men who has developed maybe due to the, some medical conditions or something they have developed breast so i would like to know like what are the reasons that they develop breast and how do we you know take care of them see if you look at the male body the uh, breast development in male is called as a gynecomastia see normally male also will have a minimal uh, formation of breast tissue all the humans per se i would say but it does not develop or it does not grow with in uh, boys mm. but due to some situation either a medical situation as you rightly said it can be a medical situation or it can be an idiopathic uh, disorder or due to uh, overeating habits uh, the body habit as they will be obese so fat will be getting deposited everywhere in the body and it develops uh, it uh, gets deposited in the breast as well so this condition is uh, gynecomastia but uh, it uh, gives a very bad psychological impact on the kids especially over the 15 or 16 and uh, they undergo severe psychological trauma they don't come out of the home they don't come out for swimming they don't mingle with their friends they don't even join college i have treated uh, boys who refuse to go to college who refuse to study uh, in plus 2 intentionally he was failing a boy who scored good marks till 10 and plus 2 he was intentionally failing his uh, father took uh, to me say, asking him to talk to him and find out so when i did a, i had a little doubt on that and after psychological counseling i found that he is having the, because of this issue he is unable to mingle with the society so i subjected him to uh, in our uh, institute our protocol is as soon as patients like him comes we do a hormonal work up Uh, to find out what is the pathology for gynecomastia so once that is over uh, hormonal workup is over and we come to a diagnosis we go ahead with uh, managing these boys so usually a uh, suction assisted uh, liposuction we call it as lipectomy suction assisted lipectomy we call liposuction you for, uh, suck off all the uh, excess fatty tissue around the breast but there will be some part of glandular element also which i said that glandular element we uh, operate and remove that after liposuction it's a two step procedure in one first step you remove you do a liposuction and suck out everything and in the second step in the same anesthesia you through an imperceptible scar over the nipple areola complex you remove the glandular element and suture and post operatively you immediately give a compression garment it's usually done as a day care procedure or maximum one day stay in the hospital under general anesthesia we will be doing these boys tolerate those uh, procedure well and they'll be very happy to mingle with the society so there's no chance of reoccurrence so since you're taking most probably most of the times it will not recur 
I would say 99.9% it won't recur. But you cannot say anything in medicine. You have to keep all this, yes. keep that in the back that of your mind. 1% should always be there, yes. Yeah. So now coming to the female breast part. So the thing is, uh, there is always a beauty standard that has always been implied on the female breast. So what are the uh, uh, techniques for the breast enhancement, sir, yeah. in females? See, uh, like I said, uh, the, in the, for the male, it is gynecomasia problem. For the women, you divide those into three categories. You can actually divide them into two, three categories. That is uh, pre-marriage uh, girls mm -hmm. and uh, after delivery, young mothers and postmenopausal ladies. So all you divide them into three categories. In these three categories, you have you again divide them into two: either hypomastia or macromastia. Hypomastia is underdeveloped breast mm -hmm. and macromastia is voluminous breast. Mm -hmm. Why we need to address the, the uh, macromastia? Macromastia causes terrible pain in the shoulders, in the back, and if it is a giant uh, macromastia, they find it very difficult to move into the society. Not only that, that causes decubitus ulcers or underneath or in the fold ulcers, uh, the inframammary crease, they develop uh, because of uh, the increased sweat, they de tend to develop uh, foul smelling ulcers, so we need okay. to treat that. Now hypomastia again a psychological impact on the women, like their counterpart in the men. Uh, so we need to address that also. Now it all depends on what is the size of uh, the underdeveloped breast, that it may be a congenitally absent breast, we call it as Poland syndrome in where not only the breast is not developed on the one side, but the, even the underlying muscle may not be developed. The underlying ribcage may not be developed. Mm. So we need to assess what is lost and what is there and what is not there we need to see. So once we assess that when the, we, have, uh, we are offering augmentation, it usually, as you all know, it can be done with implants. What sort of implants? What are you going to do? Are you going to do a textured one? Are you going to do a smooth one? Are you going to do a silicone implant? Are you going to do a saline implant? That discussion we'll reserve it. But yes, it can be augmented with implant. Now the next question would be, after implant, if it is going to be an uh, unmarried girl, after implant, will they be, after marriage, will they be able to feed or not? Yes. They will be able to feed. You don't have to worry about and with the growth of the mother, or if the mother puts on uh, more weight, what are, what are the goal, uh, after effects? You need to change the implant, that's all. So this is about the augmentation part of it. Now the reduction part of it, if it is going to be a giant macromastia, then sometimes, the even not only the breast volume increases, but the nipple areola complex per se will become large in size. And if we are going to treat that nipple areola complex in the form of a free graft, we excise the nipple areola complex, take it out, make the breast smaller, then reattach, cut this into small and reattach it. In such situations alone, the mother won't be able to nurse the child. Other, other situations, it usually will pass away. So most of the times we reserve this procedure for once people complete their family life, we advise uh, them this radical procedures. And uh, yes, after this procedure, the, as I said, the psychological impact of all the cosmetic procedures uh, will be enormous. They uh, g come back to normalcy very quick. Okay, that's good, sir. So now you have spoken about implants. So I want to know, what is the duration that you have to change the implant or anything? Is there such thing? Yeah, uh, it all uh, depends on the expectation. See, mm, I cannot, uh, the, there are various sizes in it, mm. uh, depending on the brazier's cup size, A size, B size, D size, but the chest wall size is the same, mm. that is uh, around the chest wall, the yes. thoracic diameter remains the same, it doesn't change. Mm. So if it is going to be 34, it is going to be 34. Now they want an increase in size or some people ask for large volume. We cannot offer in such a situation because the skin that is going to drape that implant, we need adequate breast tissue to drape that implant. So in the initial phase, 
what is possible we will give if it is possible only to give a b cup we give a b cup size mm. we don't uh, try to try and force them to d cup mm. so we don't want implant exposure or uh, the complications related to implant in such a situation so we cover it with a b cup now people most of the times won't be happy with the b cup mm. the skin also gives uh, uh, gives up or uh, viscoelastic properties of the skin is such that it will stretch. Mm. So you put a B implant in it, it stretches over a period of two to three years or over a period of two years, they come back to us and ask for an exchange usually. So now since the topic is about implants, I want to know in which other parts of the body they can use implants you know, for purifications? Again head to toe I will say. You can, uh, head to toe. Yeah, <laughs> head to toe. you can put the maxillary implants, you can put chin implants, you can okay. put nasal implants, you can put ear implants, mm -hmm. wherever possible you can put, including butt augmentation people are uh, doing. I really wonder how uh, they will be able to carry on their regular day-to-day uh, -day activities like sitting in a chair or lying in a bed may be difficult, but people are uh, reporting my colleagues working abroad at least not in this part of uh, the world uh, it is popular but people are augmenting the butt people are augmenting the shoulders everywhere wherever even they the six packs, I suppose. yeah <laughs> everyone wants augmentation so it is in the eyes only and are there any adverse effects while using implants sir yes uh, usually it is not as uh, published in the social media and all it's all wrong myth the in exposure of implant is one thing that is the main reason uh, if you go for an ill-fitting size uh, the implant exposure then a rupture of implants a capsular contracture we call it mm -hmm. that is little uh, funny thing happens around the implant the tissues around the implant contract and crumple it oh. so instead of protruding it causes an ugly contracture of the uh, breast tissue mm -hmm. so you need to release those things so those sort of complication occurs, but uh, most of the women agree, whatever it is, they want it to be uh, augmented, so we do that. Okay, sir. So next uh, we'll talk about the weight. So I know where people tend to put weight and there are ways that you know, for using exercise, diet and all those things, but at this current generation, I guess, some people are of course lazy <laughs> to use the alternative method and we directly opt for the surgeries, cosmetic surgery. So can I just know a few surgeries for weight reduction, sir? Actually, if you ask me, uh, weight reduction surgeries are not done by uh, a plastic surgeon. Okay. Weight reduction surgeries, there are various ways, they mm. calculate the BMI, the medical gastroenterologist attend that. They try to control the weight with the diet uh, along with the dietitian advice. They try to uh, control the weight with the diet modulations, with medications. If it fails, then they subject those people to surgical options, yeah. which a surgical gastroenterologist will do. Okay. It may be a reduction in the stomach volume to bypassing the entire GAT and connect it to the large bowel. So, the patient will undergo uh, weight loss. So, this is the concept. Once uh, that is their domain, okay. I think I will I'll not go into mm -hmm. those details. But as a plastic surgeon, once a weight reduction uh, is achieved, maybe they will lose a massive weight loss, around 40 kgs or 45 kgs. Mm -hmm. Then they come to us mm -hmm. for beautification what sort of surgeries we, uh, we can offer. See, they will have, because of the massive weight loss, everything starts sagging, starting from the face, from the arms, mm. from the breasts or the tummies, the inner thighs, everywhere it will be loose and hanging. We can tighten all those things. You call it a brachyplasty, you call it a mastopixy, you call it a tummy tuck for the abdomen, you call a thigh lift, all these can be combined along with the liposuction. If there is a fatty component, you suck it with the liposuction and you correct the contour with the open surgical approaches. We can use a, uh, hidden scars for that mm -hmm. so that uh, they, they are normalized at a very faster rate. Okay. 
So we use the tummy tuck and all those things. That is, I think, most common, right? The tummy tuck procedure. Tummy tuck procedure, especially common for women after postpartum period. Okay. Uh, so there are uh, various ways of looking at it. Uh, we can uh, do isolated liposuction in case of unmarried women where their muscle tone is normal, their skin will, will not be as excess as in, uh, in a postpartum lady. Mm -hmm. So you can subject uh, young boys or young girls for liposuction. Whereas um, if there is divarication of recti post-pregnancy, mm -hmm. along with the excess fat and skin, you can remove the uh, excess fat with the liposuction. You can correct the muscle uh, or plicate the muscle surgically and cover it up with the mesh and uh, cut the excess skin and contour the body into a good shape. Okay. I think now we have covered almost all the important body parts that requires plastic surgery, cosmetic plastic surgery. Yeah. So now sir, I also would like to know about the laser hair removal and the tattoo removal, sir. Yeah. This is uh, an increasing trend now. Yes. Uh, some or other way, they go for permanent tattooing mm. and they come back to us asking to remove those things or uh, rename that tattoo, something uh, all it comes. It's a permanent dye basically. So. We can use uh, high-end la high, high lasers are available with us. We can uh, subject those persons for laser removal. Now, once after laser removal, the problem with that is it leaves uh, ghost images. Mm -hmm. It bleaches the dye and everything, but those areas are still visible as ghost images. So they come to us asking for surgical removal. Surgical removal is possible, maybe we will offer, we will uh, offer surgery in serial excisions, okay. not in a single stage we may not be able to take it out. Okay. Maybe serially if we try to remove that, we'll, we are removing. Laser hair removal, yes, that is an uh, important if for uh, female perceptive, especially for the facial scars over the lip and over the chin area, most of the women are developing because of har hormone imbalance. And we have a good laser, India laser available with us and uh, which you, with which you can uh, remove the, all the hair follicles. Okay, and uh, what is the expectation, sir, for laser removal? Because just as you said, I don't think immediate results are... Yeah, the hair uh, for shafts are burnt immediately, but multiple sittings may be required. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the uh, duration of uh, once in two weeks or three weeks, mm -hmm. maybe uh, three to four sittings, it should solve, uh, solve most of the issues. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So it was such an informative session, actually, especially for being a female, it was way too informative. And uh, to end with, actually, nobody is born perfect and nobody is born with the features that they usually desire for. But uh, it takes immense, you know, guts and self-love to choose for cosmetic surgery and to opt to, you know, make yourself look like we want to. And uh, no issue, so we can all go for cosmetic surgery and just look like how we want to. And thank you. So by this, we are ending our session today. And next week, we'll meet up on Wednesdays, 4 to 5, with more and more informative sessions. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, sir. Thank you.